Good evening from New York. I'm Chris Hayes. A lot has happened on Capitol Hill since the last time Donald Trump was there. There was the deadly insurrection that he incited. There was the Biden inauguration that he skipped. There was the record-setting second impeachment that he faced for the deadly insurrection he incited. And there was a time in the immediate aftermath of all that, late January, February, March, it seemed he may never be welcome back. But we know how that turned out. Today, the former president and his 34 felony convictions trekked to Capitol Hill at the invitation of the House and Senate Republicans, where he was received like a different Don, a crime Don, seeking not supporters, but accomplices and co-conspirators. They're using us as a bad example of democracy, and they're getting away with murder, and we're not going to let it happen. You're all either elected or you're going to be elected again and re-elected, and I'm with every one of you, and you know that. I'll be with you always. This is an outstanding group of people. I'm with them a thousand percent. They're with me a thousand percent. We agree just about on everything, and if there isn't, we work it out. Now, the term kiss the ring has been used so often with Trump, it's virtually lost all meaning. But it really was on display in Washington today. Everything about this appearance was meant to convey the idea of Republican Party unity, and they all performed it, like, incredibly strenuously. That unity on Trump's terms, of course, essentially remaking the party of Lincoln into a mafia-type operation with him at the very top. The man who was just convicted in a conspiracy to pay off former paramours because he feared their stories would complicate his election campaign. A man found liable for sexual assault of exactly the kind that he brags about. A man who surrounded himself with lackeys who've also been convicted or charged with serious crimes, from Steve Bannon to Peter Navarro to Paul Manafort to Roger Stone to Michael Flynn. Trump himself has pardoned or commuted the sentences of many of those men. Of course, they never snitch. They're not rats. Because Trump explicitly envisions his interactions with people in these sort of organized crime transactional terms. You do for me, and if I'm in a good mood, I'm happy with your performance, you'll get a cut. And the Republican Party has signed up to be a part of this. That was on display today in his discussions with Capitol Hill Republicans behind closed doors. As sources told Punchbowl News reporter Jake Sherman, Trump singled out House Republicans who had voted to impeach him, saying out of the 10 that impeached, only one is left. Now, as Sherman pointed out, that was wrong. There are actually two left. But this was Trump basically doing his impression of Robert De Niro as Al Capone and the Untouchables, pointing out all the people in his gang who flipped on him. A sort of snitches get stitches, stay on my good side message to the foot soldiers. If you think that kind of pressure does not work, look at the outgoing Republican Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell. Remember what he said about Trump in the aftermath of the Capitol insurrection? There's no question. None that President Trump is practically and morally responsible for provoking the events of the day. No question about it. This was an intensifying crescendo of conspiracy theories orchestrated by an outgoing president who seemed determined to either overturn the voters' decision or else torch our institutions on the way out. Huh. And yet, here was McConnell today, the old man, supplicant, submissive, bending over to kiss the ring, giving a breezy endorsement of Trump's Capitol Hill pilgrimage. Senator, how was it seeing the former president? We had a good meeting. Did yeah, probably shook hands with the guns. He uh, took questions from the audience, and it was entirely... Great work, Mitch. Now, despite all that, plenty of those adoring Republican lawmakers were feckless enough to anonymously drip out details of Trump's backroom talk to Sherman and other reporters, because, again, you can never underestimate just how cowardly they are. For instance, when Trump told the House Republicans today that Milwaukee, where we're having our convention, is a horrible city. Another Republican source told reporters that Trump was rambling to the crowd, said it was like, and I quote, talking to your drunk uncle at the family reunion. Of course, in public, those anonymous Republican sources will fundamentally get in line, kiss the ring, give the Dom whatever he wants. And maybe you think this is all being too literal on my part. You know, hyperbolic with the metaphors. Crime bosses, accomplices, surely he doesn't explicitly embrace actual criminal gangs and racketeering and violence as a campaign feature. But this is now actually part of this campaign. Listen closely to this, because... 
I still can't get over this. It, it flew almost completely beneath the radar of the mainstream media. I'll, I'll include us with this, uh, with the exception of the Associated Press and a few others. But it was on display at his campaign rally last month in the Bronx when he shared the stage with a few supportive guests. Rapper Chef G. Does everybody know Chef? Where is Chef G? Where is he? Come on up, fellas. Rapper Sleepy Hollow. They always gonna whisper your accomplishments and shout your failures. Trump gonna shout the wins for all of us. Make America great again. Okay, so uh, Trump's doing a rally in the Bronx. To Trump, those rappers are valuable political allies. To the district attorney in Brooklyn, they are also criminal defendants in a sweeping extensive gang case where prosecutors say they gave material support to a Crips gang during a violent street war with another gang. Brooklyn District Attorney Eric Gonzalez says the gang members use more than 30 guns to threaten or eliminate their rivals. In total, Gonzalez says there was one murder, four attempted murders, and 12 non-fatal shootings. What we allege and what we learned during the course of this investigation is that Chef G used a lot of the money that he earned to help facilitate uh, further gang activity. He encouraged gang members to participate in violent crimes. Chef G, who's the rapper who was on stage with Donald Trump that he invited up there, prosecutors allege Chef G threw a party at Manhattan Steakhouse for gang members to celebrate a drive-by shooting in October 2020 in which one alleged rival gang member was killed and five others were injured. Murder. Again, alleged. Innocent until proven guilty in our system. But did you hear all that? Imagine what the New York Post would have done with this headline if those two gentlemen had shown up at a rally for AOC or if President Joe Biden had introduced them on stage. But the fact of the matter is that the Republican Party, conservatives have a criminal as their preferred nominee and is embracing a criminal model for the enterprise that is now the Republican Party.